If you're applying to medical school, in this video, I'm going to take you on a step-by-step -step process of how you can apply strategically. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Dr. Hilton, and when I am teaching the students on my elite coaching program, the main thing that I teach when applying to medical school is that you must, must, must apply strategically. So what is applying strategically? Well, every medical school will place a different weighting on all of the different factors that contribute to your medical school application, whether that be grades, UCAT and BMAT, or your personal statement and experience. So applying strategically means that we are playing to our strengths and choosing universities that hold high weighting in the things that we are strongest in. So for the rest of the video, we're going to go in a step-by-step -step process in order of the seven things that you need to be concentrating on if you're applying strategically. For any university that you're considering applying to, the first thing you need to do is make sure that you meet the minimum entry criteria. The first thing universities will do is shortlist some of the people based on these criteria, and if you don't meet them, you're just going to be thrown immediately in the reject pile. So for these, you'll need to take into consideration GCSE grades, A levels, degree levels if you've got one, or whether you're retaking or doing international qualifications such as the IB. Other things you'll need to consider are whether that university accept people who are doing recent exams or whether they're reapplying for a second time. They might say that certain subjects such as biology or chemistry are an absolute non-negotiable must. And some will place more emphasis on GCSEs rather than A-levels or vice versa. So the first thing that you need to do when you're considering applying to any medical school is go onto their website and check out their entry criteria to see if you fit. But then if you're not sure, you can just call up the admissions offices. They're really, really helpful. And you can literally just tell them exactly your situation, lay it all out for them and say, am I someone that's eligible? And they'll give you a quick yes or no as to whether you'll meet that initial minimum criteria. Now, the second step that you're going to need to consider is your admissions test. So this could be the UCAT, the BMAT, or if you're a graduate, the GAMSAT as well. So this is often a decision that you can make once you've sat one of these exams and you have the results, so you have the information ahead of time. But every year, some universities will provide statistics as to what levels that they accept for things such as the UCAT. They'll usually provide an average score, a minimum threshold score, and some of the highest scores that they've accepted. And you can't guarantee that your score for that year will be the same but you can get a pretty good idea from the scores whether you're generally someone that's likely to get in based on what you've achieved. And if you want to know more about aptitude test thresholds, you can check out this video here where I talk about all the bands and the likelihood of getting in based on different scores. And as a side note, the SJT is an important part of this. Some universities have requirements specifically for that section of the UCAT exam. So if you want to have a look at what you can do if you score less than a band two, you can check out a blog article that I've linked in the description below where we go into to detail about what to do if you're not in the upper half of the SJT. The third stage that you need to consider is interviews. You need to pick a university that interviews in the style that you think will suit you best because of course that's going to give you the highest chance of performing well and therefore give you a better chance of being offered a place. And if you're not familiar, the two types of interview style that you can get are either panel interviews where you'll have two or more people asking you questions and then the other type is multiple mini interviews and that will be on a circuit with lots of different tasks at each station testing the various skills that they want to see in their potential doctors. Whichever of the interview styles you're doing, I do a free interview series where I summarize the essentials of my course in this playlist here. But the point of this is to say that you should try and think of which style of interview you're going to be most suited to and maybe consider picking your universities that you apply to based on the one that you think you'll perform best in. The next thing that you need to be aware of is how universities shortlist. So everybody that they get applications for, once they have found that you meet the minimum criteria, they will then weight your application. So different medical schools will place different value on certain aspects of the application and they will give you a score based on that and then they will add up the total score. Now I have another blog article that I've linked to in the description where I talk about how universities weight the certain factors, but essentially you should be able to find most of the university's shortlisting criteria on their website and kind of work out whether it's something that is best suited to your application strengths. The four things that they will typically assign scores to when they're doing the shortlisting are your A-level or international baccalaureate or whatever exam scores, your UCAT and BMAT, the score or rating that they've given your personal statement and the level or quality of the work experience that you've had. The next step I would recommend you to take is to actually have a look at the university's admission statistics. 
Unfortunately, they're not readily accessible to all universities, but a lot of them, such as Edinburgh University, do publish these. Now, the reason that they're useful is that they're going to give you admission rates and lots of information, but one of the most important things is that they will tell you the threshold score that they would need to invite people to interview, and then the threshold score to offer people a place. When you couple that with the information that they release about how they weight and the scores that they allocate to certain elements of the application, you can make a very informed decision about whether you stand a chance of being invited to interview and being offered a place. And after all of that, you finally actually get to decide which university you actually want to go to. Now, I've just made a video about how to choose the right university for you, which I'll link to here. But basically, there are three things that I would consider. Firstly, the location, because it's really important that you're going to spend five or six years there. You need to make sure that you're going to be in a place that you're going to enjoy. Second, I would say that the course type is really important, something that suits you better, whether that be problem-based learning, more traditional styles of teaching, or maybe doing something that's integrated between the two. And finally, whether the university offers intercalation. But like I say, I won't talk too much about that here because you can watch all of that and the decision-making process in that video. However, one thing that I would recommend that you look at is a recent initiative by UCAS called the Teaching Excellence and Student Outcomes Framework, or TEF for short, which actually gives all the universities a bronze, silver or gold medal based on the quality of teaching rated by the students. And that's just another thing that's going to help you select whether you like that university and it's something that you want to put a lot of effort into applying to. And the final element that I would recommend is how you spread your application selections. So as you may know, you only get four selections to medical school. And I would say that everybody has dreams of going to some of the more high flying or high profile universities, but it's not necessarily the best option to apply to maybe all four of them being the most competitive. So one strategy that I tend to recommend to my students that I'm coaching is to go for two of their dream universities, the real ones that they think, although they might be competitive, would just absolutely love to go to. Then I would go for one medium one, which is a kind of semi-safe bet option. And then finally, I'd do a safety net option, which is one that is historically a little bit easier to apply to. That is, of course, as long as they meet all the criteria that we've discussed all throughout this video. But that way, it covers all possibilities. It gives you an insurance to make sure that you at least get a place at medical school, but at the same time gives you a chance of getting into your dream university, even though it is a bit more competitive. So if you want to ask me anything about this process feel free to drop some questions in the comments below and if you want to go through a rigorous seven step process of how to choose your medical school you can check out this video here and also if you'd like to go into a lot more depth about some of the things that we've discussed in this video you can check out the full blog articles which are linked in the description below so thanks for watching and i'll see you over again in either the blog or one of the videos that we've talked about take care